Today on the channel, I'm gonna be talking strictly Toy Machine, Toy Machine Tuesdays. Let's get it. So just to get into the story, Toy Machine was actually a band called Blue Lizard, which was started by me and Mikey O'Connor, the bass player of Toy Machine right now. So how it got started was, Mikey and I literally have been jamming since the ages of 10 and seven years old. So Mikey's my cousin. While we were growing up, his dad was playing in a band and he was in a band from the late 80s and he still jams now and Mikey and I still jam with him. So through his influence, we started getting influenced by Stone Temple Pilots, Black Sabbath, Incubus, his bands, and we took that and ran with it. So literally at the age of 10 and seven, we started jamming both on the guitar. Mikey was already playing for a few years. I think he started playing when he was three or four years old, but we started getting serious around 12 years old. I was 12, Mikey was nine. We started playing drums and guitar together. So now we're actually writing songs. From that moment, we started taking it a little bit more serious where we found our first name, Blue Lizard, and it was named after a sunscreen. And that story is me and my uncle were at a CVS and we just would say, you know, randomly, oh yeah, that would be a good band name. This would be a good band name, anything we saw. So he saw while we were online, a Blue Lizard sunscreen. He's like, that's a dope name. I'm like, that's it. That's our band name. I go back to his house. I tell his son, Mikey, I say, Mikey, we're Blue Lizard. Blue Lizard was the band name from when I was the age of 12 all the way until I was 22 years old. So when we had gotten new members, we still were Blue Lizard and the new members were Greg Alders and Ray Bentley. At that time, we were brand new, fresh. We said, all right, we got to change the name next time we drop something big. That next thing that we dropped was our song Flatline. Now the story goes how I met Ray Bentley and how Greg Alders joined the band was we were losing our drummer at the time. He had more serious things going on. He couldn't be in the group anymore as serious. So I hit up Greg and I was like, Greg, we have a big show. We we're opening up for a band from DC called Red Gold Green. We we're playing at Debonair Music Hall. We already had the show booked, no drummer. So I called Greg, I'm like, Greg, I need a drummer, interim drummer, interim position. We're searching for somebody new. He had a band at the time, The Cause and the Cure. He's like, yeah, no doubt, I'll learn the tracks. We went to his studio, he came to our studio. We jammed maybe, I wanna say five times before the show. Crushed the show. Now, three months before that in April, I had met Ray Bentley for the first time. Blue Lizard was playing a show at William Patterson where Ray went to college, and it was for a show called Braveathon. Braveathon is an all day event. I think it runs from eight in the morning to 10 at night, and they live stream it, and they have it play on their radio station all day. So Ray, from what he says, he was there all day waiting for somebody not to show up so he could perform. When we walked into the doors of William Patterson, we're bringing in all the big amps, we have all the guitars, me, Mikey, Josh, Joey, that was the band at the time. My uncle Mike came with us. So we're standing there in the lobby and next thing I know, I see Ray Bentley. Now Ray Bentley is the guy. My whole life, me and Mikey have heard from my uncle Mike, you got to find the guy. And what the guy means is the lead singer. Who's gonna be that guy that just is so outlandishly amazing that you're gonna, people are just gonna be like, I need to follow whatever this is because I just don't understand it. So they really wanna understand how this was created. I saw him, I immediately go over to Ray and I say, Ray, I didn't even know his name. I said, dude, you have to be my lead singer. He's like, you don't even know if I sing. I'm like, do you sing? He goes, I rap. I'm like, perfect, because we do rap rock. Like, we were already in that game. So, Ray's like, yeah, no, I just opened up for Young Thug. I'm opening up for Jay Critch, Rich the Kid. I'm like, dude, we got to do this. Next thing you know, three months later, still no contact, nothing. We get Greg in the band. He's the interim drummer. Ray messages us, I think, in July. It was like July 30th. He hits me up. I'm doing a sales job at the time. I see the message on Instagram. 
he goes, hey, I need a band. I'm doing a festival. I want a backing band because it's going to be a 45 minute set. I just don't want to be up there jumping around rapping. I need a backing band. I told him, pull up to the studio. He pulled up that night. It was a Tuesday night. He pulled up. He was serious. We started getting to talking about what his vision was, what me and Mikey's vision was. It was perfect. It was exactly what we needed at that moment. So we booked our first show, which was that festival. It was called Spun Flower. Ray had it booked. And we also played our first show within 16 days on August 16th of, I think, 2019, which was at Annabella's House of Mozzarella on August 16th of 2019. Now, Ray wasn't even going to perform on that show because I was the lead singer at the time and we had only practiced a handful of times at that time. So at that time, when we were practicing, the day before that August 16th show at Annabella's, I said, Ray, you have to perform with us. Like we already have something special. So we did a few songs as just Blue Lizard and then Ray Bentley came out for the last three songs and the crowd literally went nuts. We had about 200 people in the place as our first show with Ray Bentley and Greg Alders on the drums. From that moment, we played a few more shows as Blue Lizard, but then we put out our first official music video together, which was for Flatline that Joey Viso shot. From that moment, we said, all right, we need a new band name. We have a fresh new look. We have fresh people in the band. Let's come up with a new band name. And that's when Toy Machine was created. And then we released that name on February 22nd of 2020 when we had our video release party for Flatline. Now that party was absolutely crazy. We were at our studio in Clifton and I think about 80 people popped up. Here's Joey Vista right here, blocking my, my YouTube. I was in a nice flow. <laughs> <laughs> what I wish was that Joey Viso wasn't in here right now so I could finish my YouTube video because I have to leave in a few minutes. All right, I want to give a shout out to the Blank Workshop, my boy Kinky. He got Kinky in the city. Thank you for sponsoring our video today. He said if I make this shot right now, he's going to give me $100. So we got it right here. Let's see. You got it. I thought you were going to make it. Come check them out. They're in Hackensack. Come to the Blank Workshop. Get your clothes check made. Right Let's there. go. Show the Blank Workshop. This is where we at right now. It's what we do. Make moves. Yeah, so that party was crazy. I think we had 80 people pop out. And at that time, it was literally a 400 square foot room that we packed. That our landlord was so mad at us. He was like, the capacity of this room is eight people and you just put 80 people in it. So you 10 times the limit, but you're lucky that I like you. So Bob, if you're watching this, thank you for giving us a second opportunity or yeah, a third opportunity at this, at this point because there's been other things, but we'll get into that in other videos. Toy Machine is compiled now of me, Mikey O'Connor, Greg Alders, and Ray Bentley. This is the lineup. We are very, very serious about what we're doing and we really, really take everything that we do very seriously. So from hosting events to our merch, to the hot sauce that we have, to making connections on the daily and really trying to get us and our scene to the next level. With Toy Machine, we see only greatness. Like. When I say that, we really, really believe that we are going to be on the big stages. We're going to eventually play at Madison Square Garden and we are going to give all of our super loyal fans that have been here since the start, we're gonna give them the backstage passes and the front row seats and we're gonna really make sure that everybody that supports us truly, truly gets the most out of what they've given us and all of the love that they've shown us throughout the years. Now, right now, we have two new music videos coming out. We're shooting a third one for We Want Sludge. We Want Sludge just came out and was just released. We had a release party at the Film Factory that was awesome. And we're going to be going into a new recording session with Steve Kellner, and we're going to be doing three new songs. And then we're going to a recording session with Mike Lisa, where we're going to be doing one song. So we got four songs lined up for the spring, for the summer. 
and we're actually working on a three-part EP series, which is going to be named either The Sludge Tapes or Sludge Volume 1. We don't know yet, but that will be coming out very soon. So the future is super bright for Toy Machine. I just wanted to give you guys a nice little introduction on how it got started, where we're at right now, and what we see in our future. And again, I really see the future being bright for Toy Machine, and we're really gonna access everybody that we have, all the connections we have, and really make sure that we're giving back to the community and giving back to the people who really support and love us. Thank you guys for tuning in for this Toy Machine Tuesday. This is gonna be a recurring thing on Tuesdays. So if you have any deeper questions about the band, don't be afraid to let me know in the comments and I'll answer really anything. How we got started, a deeper dive on it, how we got to our big events, how we plan to get to the MSG stage. I will really try to teach you and show you how we've grown our value from zero dollars to almost $2,500 for a show. I want to give and teach more people so that we can really take the scene to the next level and not everybody having to play free shows and pay to play and all of the things that are typically you know, ridiculed in what the scene is. I want to take it to the next level for everybody and Toy Machine wants to take it to the next level. So again, like and subscribe and I'll see you guys on the next episode.